Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to explain an easy and the most reliable technique for the management of radix endomolaris. At first, what is this radix endomolaris? Radix endomolaris is the presence of an extra distal lingual root in mandibular first molars. It may be present in a second or a third molar, but it is very common in mandibular first molars. If you haven't done a root canal treatment in a tooth with radix endomolaris, then probably you would have missed so many teeth with radix. It is quite common that it accounts for around 3 to 22 percentage of mandibular first molars. Especially in case of Asian population, it is very, very common. So let's see in detail how to do a root canal treatment and what are all the techniques and the protocols that we have to follow while doing root canal treatment in a tooth with an extra distal lingual root. At first, we can divide the management protocol into basic three steps. One, the difficulties in locating the root canal orifice and the difficulties in negotiating the radix root or the radix canal and the third is the clinic and cleaning and shaping protocols for uh, radix endomolaris. Let's see one by one. At first, how to locate the root canal orifice and what's the ideal location or what's the exact location of a radix root? We can see in this picture. So this can be considered as an a conventional axis cavity preparation for a mandibular first molar. So we can see the mesiobuccal, the mesiolingual, and the distal canals. In order to locate a radix, we have to extend the axis cavity more lingual and distal. So once you extend the axis cavity, we can locate the radix root or the distolingual root in this location. We can see the exact location which is lingual to the distal canal and maybe little mesial. So that will be the ideal location for looking for the radix endomolaris. Okay. So the second thing that you have to know is often this location or this canal is often missed because uh, the location may vary a little from tooth to tooth and but most often you can find in this location. So take a DG16 and just scrap it in the pulpal floor or you can use a 15 size K file and we can uh, look, uh, try to locate the radix in this location. So that will be the first tip that I will be giving for locating the root canal uh, orifice of a radix endomolaris. The second is we have to negotiate the radix canal. Often, uh, you can see in this picture, if you are looking the radix root, the extra root, which will be projecting more compared to that of the, the mesial or the distal root. So more towards the lingual. The locating the main canals, that is the mesiobuccal and mesiolingual and also the distal canals will be quite easy. As with any other tooth, we can do it. But the radix root, you can con you can consider that it will be present at an acute angle from the main root or the main canals. So the simple location as with any other technique, any other canal as we always do may not be very feasible. So in this situation, take a 15 size K file and give a curvature and try to move following the walls. So following the walls, just move it up and down. And at, once it goes to the certain position in the location, which I already mentioned before, it will get locked or it will get binded. So once the file get binded and then you can start negotiating. So often the location of the canal is very, very important. And then instead of using a very narrow file, just for at least for locating and negotiating, we can use a 15 size K file. And in many situations, that will be more helpful rather than using a 6, 8 or a 10 size file. Follow this, it will be easy. So now the third point or the third stage of doing 
uh, a radix root canal treatment is the difficulties in doing cleaning and shaping. As we have seen already, if you are using a rotary file in the conventional access cavity that we have already prepared, you can see that it forms an acute angulation in the coronal part of the file. As we always know, and in my previous videos also, multiple times I have mentioned that, if you are creating an acute angle in the rigid part of the file, then there are more chances for file separation. So here you can see that in the rigid part of the file, there is an angulation. So that has to be avoided. If you are doing root canal treatment, holding the file in this position, the file will get separated or fractured in this location. So how to avoid that? Two things that we have to do. One, we have to modify or extend the access cavity preparation a little towards the opposite side. So look, the canal will be present in the distolingual direction. So we have to extend the access cavity in the buccal, maybe the distal buccal location, we have to extend the access cavity preparation. So uh, that will be the first point. And the second, before using any rotary files, take an orifice enlargement file. For example, SX in a pro taper system or a 8% taper, 25 tip size in, in constant taper cleaning and shaping system. Take a rotary file, the orifice opener, and just enlarge the orifice. So, whenever you are using an orifice opener, this will remove more of the material, that is the dentin, from this location, that, that which is highlighted uh, red in color. And once it removes this material, that is the dentin, you can, if you are doing cleaning and shaping, then you can prevent, minimize, or avoid the curvature formation in the uh, coronal aspect of the file or in the rigid aspect of the file. Now we can see that the file can be a, quite straightforward, at least in the coronal part. So you may wonder that what about the curvature in the apical part? Never worry about the apical curvature. More chances for the file separation happens not in the apical part, but always in the coronal part. Why? Because the apical part of the file will be quite flexible. A flexible file will never fracture easily in curvatures. So it can fracture, but the fracture incidences are very less. But in the coronal part, if there is a curvature, and in my experience, I have seen so many dentists fracturing file exactly at the uh, entrance of the radix root. So I hope these points will be really helpful and this is a simple case of handle management of the radix entomolaris. You can see that if you are seeing a preoperative radiograph, the side, the, the mesial root, the distal root, and in between the two, we can easily appreciate the radix root, the, the extra root. Sometimes it may not be of the equal length compared to that of the mesial and the distal root. Sometimes it may be short, sometimes it may be long, it can vary. But what we cannot appreciate in a radiograph is the angulation. It is not a straightforward root. It is not a straightforward canal. It will be projecting towards the lingual aspect. So always you have to keep it in mind. So what we can do. So uh, if you have not experienced this, always take two preoperative radiographs. One may be from the straight angulation and one give a little mesial or a distal angulation whenever you get a doubt whether there could be a radix root which is present. So after that, you can see that I, have, I did the working length determination, the master cone and the obturation. And here you can see the canals, which are the mesiobuccal, the mesiolingual, distal and the radix. So always appreciate the location of the radix because we have to extend the access cavity little more lingual, which we usually do not do for the conventional access cavity preparation for mandibular first molars. And always look, not only in a mandibular first molar, always look in mandibular second molars also. It may be there. So the chances for radix intermolaris are quite frequent and it is that we miss and we do not 
uh, appreciated in the radiograph and it is one of the most common reason for uh, failure of uh, root canal treatment that is missing the radix root. So it is more common than you think if you are doing a 10 mandibular first root canal treatments at least in one tooth that you can expect the radix. Then the preoperative radiograph is very very important and I'll at least take it in two angulations and uh, try to appreciate the presence of the radix root and it is one of the most common cause for failure of root canal treatment and this is one of the more common reason for the instrument fracture and do not worry about the apical curvature always concentrate on the coronal curvature that is from the main canal the orifice which is starting and the starting point of the root. So always try to maintain that part straight that the file which is doing cleaning and shaping and that part should be straight. And if you are following all these tips, then your the root canal treatment for radix and domolaris will be quite easy, straightforward and do not worry about any instrument separations or failures. So thank you for watching. And if you like this type of presentations or videos, kindly consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, Smart Dentistry. So we will, we will get back with another video. Until then, have a nice day. Thank you for watching.